The point is in quantity comparison questions, we have two quantities, right? Actually, we consider these at two sides of inequality. We don't know about the sign, right? What you are saying, we can do that when we have only positive integers. Because in positive integer, if you multiply an equality with a positive sign, the sign, the let's suppose if this is greater, if you multiply with a positive sign, the sign will remain same. But if you multiply with a negative sign, the sign will change. That's why in this case, we are having consecutive integers and those could be positive, those could be negative and even zero as well. So if you multiply this with a negative number, let's suppose we don't know about y. You might think that if we divide y on both sides, that will be very simple. We have x and z, but that is not possible in our scenario because y could be negative as well. Getting my point? Yes, I got it. So in case of quality comparison question, whenever you are 100% sure that the values are positive integer, are positive values, you can use the operations, you can divide, you can multiply. But if you're unsure about that, you can never multiply or divide. But you can okay. add or subtract because these are those sides of inequality. You can add or subtract, but you cannot multiply or divide. Got my point? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Now, very basic thing. I'm trying to cover the most of the part of the consecutive integers. If we have n consecutive integers, what will be the range of that? You know about range? Range is maximum minus minimum. Max, yes. Max minimum minus. minus. A set, minimum. Having, a set is having n consecutive integers. So what will be the range of that set? 2n? No, n minus 1. n minus 1, yes. In minus Let's suppose one. we have three consecutive integers. 1, 2, 3. n is 3, right? So the range is 3 minus 1, 2. And that is n minus one, which is true. This is for consecutive integers. But if the question asks, we have n consecutive even or odd integers. What will the range in that case? Will be n minus two. That will be two into n minus one. For example, we have, we have uh, three consecutive integers, two, four, uh, oh. two, four, and mm -hmm. six. We have three consecutive even integers. N is three, right? So range will be six minus two, four. And that will be two into N minus one. Two into three minus one. That is also four. Right? Uh, can we do like that? Like, uh, suppose N minus one is two and N is four and n plus two is six so n plus two uh, minus n minus one we can do that way but so that will be a bit just just memorize this thing that in case of consecutive integers okay. the range will be just one less than the total number and in case of uh, consecutive even or odd the range will be just twice of that what is in consecutive integer case just remember this thing okay. this is highly asked in the quantity comparison question in exam. So just have a better idea of this. Okay. So what is the time? We are already just solve. Yeah. I have plenty of questions for you, but due to time shortage, let's just move to the difficult question because these questions will take time. So just move to these. Okay. So where can we practice through these questions so afterwards? Can you give these kind of questions? I mean, you can uh, so, so that we can practice right for the homework for the homework you you may we will discuss this in lot we will discuss this thing okay. this at last okay. over time being okay. just okay. we have two more questions okay. a difficult question the question is saying that x is a sum of by consecutive integers W is a sum of Z consecutive integers and the question states if 
phi is equal to 2z and uh, y z are both positive integers which of the following can never be true quantity a is x is equal to y quantity b is x is greater uh, x is equal to w x is greater than w quantity c is x over y is an integer quantity d is w over z is an integer and quantity e is x over z is an integer i will repeat my question that x is a sum of y consecutive integers w is a sum of z consecutive integers if y is equal to 2z and y and z are both positive integers which are the following can never be true the options are x is equal to w x is greater than w x over y is an integer uh, w over z is an integer and last x over z is an integer just take 2 minutes to solve this question this is a bit tricky question take your time and we will discuss afterward just recall some of the properties of the computer circuit using those properties this question can be solved very quickly sorry what what were you saying just saying just uh, go to the properties which i discussed earlier by using those property this can be solved very quickly B. B. Yeah. Okay. So one option is D, and one option is B. So we are having B, D. Any option left? Anyone else? And it's B. Anyone who is still trying to solve this, I shall let solve this now. Uh, C. Okay, so one is C now. Multiple answers. Anyone else? We are left with A and E. Anyone with A and anyone with E? E. Oh yes, with E. Now we are left with A. <laughs> No one with A. This question is a very so good question like to understand. This question is no, very good question to understand this concept. Okay. The answer to this is C. We will yes. discuss now how this is C. The question was saying that x is a sum of y consecutive integers. So let's pick a scenario that. Uh, 
we have y consecutive integers and that result in x right and we have z consecutive consecutive integers that result in w right and there is one more thing given the question that phi is equal to 2z right so we are just sure about one thing that y is even even is with me till now yes sorry i just say that from the data we are sure that oh, y right. is even right, right. first thing yes. and z yes. could be even or odd could be yes. even or could be odd we don't know about this okay so let's see each of the options separately the first one is x is equal to w right this could be possible for example if we consider uh, z as one let's suppose that is five one value so y will be having two values let's suppose this is two and three so if we sum this this is five this is five so in first case is possible so we can easily ignore this right getting a point please repeat that sorry the question is saying that y is equal to 2z okay y and z are consecutive integers right if i suppose z as one one consecutive integer which is five only one integer and y will be two consecutive let's suppose i suppose that value is two and three so if i sum these the result is five and that is also five so one is x and one is w in first case this is possible so we can ignore this this is first case the second case was x is greater than w right now take any example let's suppose uh, again this is 2 3 and z is just 1 right so this sum to 5 and this remain as 1 so in this case this is also possible again ignore this with me till now okay so third case is let's hold for c for now let's move to d now the d was that uh, w over z is an integer right okay so let's suppose z is 3 let's suppose z is 3 so uh let's suppose we consider three values 1 2 1. you're getting my point right if anyone is confused yes, please yes, yes. Yes. got it so, okay 1 2 3 right so in this case the w will be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 that is 6 and if we divide w by z this is 6 by 3 answer is 2 so this is integer again this is not possible the question is saying which of the following can never be a possible value now let's move to the e e was that x over z is an integer please mute yourself okay if i consider z as 1 y will be 2 right so consider z length of 2 uh, and if i consider this as 1 into so x will be equal to this is equal to 1 plus 2 3 this is x and w is equal to uh, x over z yeah x is 3 and z is 1 so x over z is also an integer right yes no so ignore this yes now just move Please. to the c part the c part was saying that x over y is an integer at first we discussed that y is even right 
because y is equal to two z. We from that assume that y is even. And uh, let's suppose y, if y is even, if I support y is two, and if I consider two values, let's suppose one and two. So x will be equal to one plus two, that is three. So three over two is never an integer. If you remember, I told you earlier that the sum of, if n is even, the sum of n consecutive integer can never be divisible by n itself. So, yes. Remember that property? We, let's suppose yes. if n is 2, n is even, the sum of n consecutive integer is never divisible by n. And that is, that is a property here. We have w consecutive integers and its sum is x. So its sum is never divisible by y because y is even. Anyone got my point? Yes. Yes. Perfect. So, one last question now, and that is also very. Is it true question. that is, is it true that the sum of n consecutive integer is always odd? Sum of n consecutive integer is always odd. Yes. Is it true? No. No. I just saw this question which I am writing now. You will you can say will get clear about this thing. This will be last question for today. The question is that if A is a, uh, is the sum of X consecutive integers and B is the sum of Y consecutive integers. For which of the following it is impossible that A is equal to B. I'm repeating the question that if A is a sum of x consecutive integers and b is the sum of y consecutive integers for which are the following it is impossible that a is equal to b so option a is for x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 6 option b is for x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 6 option c is for x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 9 option d is for x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 4 and option E is for X is equal to 10 and Y is equal to 7, right? If A is a sum of X consecutive integers and B is a sum of Y consecutive integers, for which of the following, it is impossible that A is equal to B. And we are given five options that for first option, X is equal to 2, Y is equal to B, X is equal to 3, Y is equal to 6, X is equal to 7, Y is equal to 9, X is equal to 10, Y is equal to 4, and X is equal to 10 and Y is equal to 7. We have only two minutes to solve this question. B. A. This could be multiple answer, like eight. This is not a multiple answer. Only one option is possible. Take your time and solve this. Just take one and a half minute more. Is D the answer? Okay, so again we have A and D. Any other answer?
is there any other way to solve this without plugging in the values like we have to plug in the values isme Mm. Uh, can we solve through odd even formula likewise I, we have done previously mm, yes you don't need actually need to input values in this okay we will discuss it no other answer for now shall i solve this now no i got b okay. i am still doing you just one half minute now just solve this question See. Uh, what is your answer? See, uh, I didn't do it, but see. I think yes. it may be C. Okay. Okay. Let's solve this question now. The question was saying that A is a sum of x consecutive integers. and b is a sum of y consecutive integers for which of the following it is impossible that a is equal to b okay now in this question let's see each of the case separately right then we will uh, try to come out generalize generalize sort of answer the first one was x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 6 we have two consecutive integers right so there are two scenarios that one is odd and next one is even first is even and next one is odd so in both cases the result is odd right so when x is 2 result is always odd but when x is 6 there are two scenarios starting with even odd even odd even and odd or odd even odd even odd even right right okay yeah okay so we have uh, three evens and three odds right so odd even plus odd is odd even plus odd is odd and even plus odd is odd right so this one is uh odd plus odd plus odd even this become even odd, and odd. the answer is that uh, final answer is odd, odd. right odd. likewise yes. we have three odds and three even the result odd. is also odd right so in this case both could be same possible right? so this is not possible other one is 3 and 6 Four, three, and six. Right. This could be even, odd, even, or odd, even, odd. And which we have discussed that for six, it is always odd. So in first case, this is odd. In second case, this is even. Right. So this could be equal in one case and could not be equal in another case. If we are starting with even, both are equal. And if we are starting with odd, both can never be equal. But the question is saying. Which of the following? It is impossible that it mean this is again not possible. We are searching for a value that is never equal in any case, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So third one is seven and nine. Seven and nine, right? One is seven and one is nine. So in case of seven. If you see closely, we could have uh, in one case four odds and uh, three even, or four even and three odds, right? Yes, in the so, series. Yeah, in first case, we have even uh, times odd, so this will always be even because odd, 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 odd. These two even, these two even, even. so this will be even. But in other case, in we odd, have odd, odd times of. So this will be odd, right? Yes. Okay. So other case we we have five even or four odds or 
फाइव ऑर्ड एंड फोर इवन सो इन फर्स्ट केस द रिजल्ट विल बी इवन एंड इन अदर केस रिजल्ट विल बी ऑर्ड सो इन सम केसेस दे कुड हैव सेम आंसर एंड दे कुड हैव डिफरेंट आंसर एज वेल I'm assuming that all of you are well comfortable with even and odd concept. That's why I'm just moving quickly now. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. So this is also possible case. We can ignore this. Now let's move to the D, four and ten. We have four. We have ten. Right. So in case of four, we have two evens and two odds. Or two odds, or two even, right? We have even times odds, right? So the result will always be even. Be even. And similarly for ten. Yeah, similarly for ten, we have five times odd and five times mm -hmm. even, or five times even, or five times odd. In this case, we have five times odd in both cases. So result is always odd, right? So in first scenario we will always get even, but in second scenario we will always get odd. So these can in never this. be equal in any scenario, yes. right? Likewise, in case uh, for E, you can check that we have ten and seven, ten and seven, right? But we discuss for uh, ten we have five odds and five even, or five even and five odd. So this will always be odd. In case of seven, we have four even or three odd, or four odd three even. In first case, this is odd. In second case, this is even. So these could be equal in one case, in which both are odds, right? So only possible way in which we can't have a and b equal, that is d. You got the point. Yes. 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 So instead yes. of substituting values, there is a uh, the the even and odd are very important. You will see a lot of questions. Even those are not directly related to the even odd concept, but in some way you can quickly solve by using even and odd. If you start substituting values in this question, that will take hell of a time. Mm -hmm. Agree on that point? Yes. 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 Especially yes. for this math because the range is so much. Lindy. Yeah. Otherwise, if you start solving this, that will take a lot of your time. Right. Okay. So for now, we are done with the even and odds. The not even and odds consecutive integers. Okay. So I believe you are all. All of you are now well familiar with the consecutive integer term, and you can solve. Not if not all, but most of the question now. So any practice uh, 